Welcome back to part 2 of this migraine series. If you haven't watched part 1 where I talk about migraine treatments, feel free to go back and watch it. Link will be in the description. So, to answer today's question, can migraine be prevented? The answer is yes. Migraine prevention can be done with two approaches. Pharmacological, which means medications, or non-pharmacological approach. But first up, who needs it? and why. Migraine prevention is indicated for those with migraine headaches that are frequent, examples more than 4 headaches per month, or long-lasting more than 12 hours, or those that cause significant disability or diminished quality of life. The main goals of preventive therapy are to reduce the attack frequency, severity and duration, to improve responsiveness to treatment of acute attacks, to improve function and reduce disability, and finally, to prevent progression or transformation to a chronic migraine. Examples of non-pharmacological measures are to practice good sleep hygiene, which is to set consistent bedtimes and wake times, sleep only as long as you need to feel rested, avoid caffeine, alcohol, and smoking before bed, and do not look at a phone or electrical devices right before bed. Eat regular and healthy meals around the same time each day, get regular exercise, and avoid things that may trigger a migraine. This table shows the complete list of triggering factors for migraine. You may pause the video to have a look. As for pharmacological therapy, four classes of drugs are proven to be effective in preventing migraines, namely beta blockers, antidepressants, anticonvulsants, and CGRP antagonists. Beta blockers Originally developed to treat high blood pressures, beta blockers have been found to be effective in preventing migraines. Common examples are propanolol in 2 divided doses starting at 40 mg daily and metoprolol in 2 divided doses starting at 50 mg daily. Antidepressants A drug named amitriptyline starting dose at 10 mg at bedtime was found to be effective to prevent migraine in 4 separate trials. Another drug is venlafacine, starting at 37.5 mg once a day. Both amitriptyline and venlafacine has been included in the American Academy of Neurology guidelines to prevent migraine. The most common side effects for both are sleepiness, hence these drugs are usually used at bedtime and start at a low dose. Anticonvulsants The anticonvulsants sodium valproate and topiramate are found to be effective, however, Valproate should not be used for females of childbearing potential because of its teratogenic potential. In recent years, there's a new drug known as CGRP antagonist or calcitonin gene-related peptide antagonist. To understand how this drug works, we first need to know how migraine attack occurs. Migraine occurs when a nerve in our brain known as the trigeminal ganglion is being activated and releasing chemicals in our brain. One of it is the chemical calcitonin gene-related peptide. Release of these chemicals are associated with the process of neurogenic inflammation, and thus, this drug tends to inhibit the release of these chemicals. A common example is arinomab, given as a monthly injection. Regardless of the drug chosen, there are some general principles to follow to improve the success rate of this therapy. First, always start an oral medication at a lower dose. Increase the dose gradually until therapeutic benefit is achieved or the maximum dose of the drug is reached or side effects becomes intolerable. Secondly, always give the medicine adequate time to work. Studies have found that certain medication take as long as one month before the patient notices any improvement. And finally, it is important to avoid overuse of acute headache therapies such as Tylenol, NSAIDs or triptans as this will lead to a problem known as medication overuse headache. So there you have it guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more medical topics in the future. See ya!